Call to order, this is a notice of the 20th regular meeting of the 2009-2010 Common Council. As is uh, customary, I will have our city clerk, Sue Richards, read the quote of the evening. Thank you, Mayor. Life is a gift, and it offers us the privilege, opportunity, and responsibility to give something back by becoming more. Thank you, Sue. Roll call, please. Born. Here. Bauk. Here. Bowers. Here. Decker. Here. Gisha. Here. Hannah. Here. Heidemann. Here. Koth. Here. Kittleson. Here. Kleunis. Here. Montemayor. Here. Rindfleisch. Here. Zurich. Here. Vanderweel. Here. Vu. Here. And Wangaman. Here. 16 full, present. Full house. We have a quorum. Uh, now if Alderman Decker can please come up and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Jeremy. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes of the prior council meeting. Under discussion. No discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The minutes are approved. Public forum? Yes, this evening we have two people on public forum. First would be Delcy Johnson. If you could come up to the front, please. Delcy, can I get your home address? 1306 North. Third Street, Sheboygan. And you will have five minutes. Thank you. Mayor Ryan, members of the council and citizens. There is still a real possibility that Orange Cross will fold and we will take over the entire area. We would then look to add an additional 12 firefighters. These words were written by Jeff Herman when the Sheboygan Fire Department took over ambulance services from Orange Cross. Jeff Herman is now Chief Herman appointed by the Police and Fire Commission in a five-minute meeting which Commission President John Webster refuses to discuss. I have been told that there were 40 applicants for the position. None of them, including Jeff Herman, were interviewed. And the job description for the position was changed to eliminate the requirement of a college degree, which Mr. Herman does not have. And now Chief Herman is making his move to put Orange Cross out of business by requiring, requesting the hiring of three additional firefighter paramedics and a pumper truck so the department can do transports, which will be the end of Orange Cross. Not too long ago, there was discussion of the need for three men on a fire truck in the interest of safety. Now suddenly, with three more firefighter paramedics, the department wants to do transports which would take two firefighter paramedics away from the city for several hours to Milwaukee, Fond du Lac, or Green Bay. What would this do vis-a-vis -vis the safety issue for the citizens of the city? While the fire union complains that they do not have adequate staff to provide fire services, the chief is asking for additional firefighter par paramedics to provide a new service. There is no need for the fire department to do transports. If Orange Cross cannot make a profit paying their employees half of what the fire, fire department employees make, I wonder what the city's profit would be, even using the marginal cost analysis. The three new firefighter paramedics would have to be considered an expense of operating the ambulance service. And when Orange Cross goes out of business, as it surely will if the city does transports, even on a limited basis, the city will have no choice but to hire more ambulance personnel. Using 2009 salaries and benefits, the cost of 16 paramedic firefighters would be $1,285,972. That figure will increase with every year's salary and benefit increases, and there will be additional equipment and supply costs, fuel and maintenance costs, and administrative costs. Additionally, it should be noted that runs and collections for the first half of 2009 were down, which makes even the marginal profit shrink. Perhaps that is why the department has increased all ambulance fees by 10, 20, and even 40 percent. There are presently three medical leave situations in the fire department. One will curtail a person's activities for a year, and two others require shorter leaves. 
These are short-term needs. So the question becomes, is it more cost-effective to hire three new firefighter paramedics or pay overtime for the required time these firefighters are not available? If three new firefighter paramedics are hired, you will have added three permanent full-time employees. There are seven retirees in the fire department. The position of one of the retirees has been eliminated, leaving six positions open. There are no firefighters among the retirees, which include a deputy chief, four captains, and a lieutenant. Reorganization of the department at the top, as was suggested by Alderman Gisha at the Salary and Grievances meeting on January 11th, should be considered as an alternative to the promotion and pay increases that Chief Herman is requesting for six retirees and others. The Council has voted to apply for stimulus funds in the amount of $409,734 to pay the salaries and benefits of three firefighters for two years, after which time the firefighters, after which time the taxpayers of the City of Sheboygan would have to assume that cost. While it is good to think that we may receive some federal tax dollars back, the Council needs to consider the big picture and determine if these firefighters are necessary <clears throat> and what the administrative needs are for the Department. And the Council also needs to consider the impact of the newly required MOE for po police and fire departments. The Council took some good steps with the STAR Resolution and the 2010 bud Budget Resolution to address efficiencies and employee issues, not just for this year, but for the years beyond. And I hope you will not lose sight of what you want to accomplish with those resolutions, which, though painful, are in the best interest of your long-term goal of bringing salaries and benefits to 80%. Again, I urge you to consider the long-term consequences of expanding ambulance services, even on a limited basis. I strongly believe that that limited basis will expand to a not-so-limited basis, and there will be no going back. Do you want to put the city in a position of hiring 12 additional firefighter paramedics to provide this new service? Excuse me, Delcy. Would you like your additional minute? Please. Go ahead. If you allow the department to do transports even on a selective basis, Orange Cross will not survive and the city will have no choice. Again, I ask you, is this really the direction you want to go? There is no need for the fire department to do transports or ambulance services. It is merely a job security issue for the firefighters. Government should not be in the business Government should not be doing what the private sector can do, and government should not be in the business of putting private businesses out of business. Thank you. Thank you, Dulcie. Thank you once again, Dulcie. And the next person is Jane Kettler, is it? Is Jane here? Jane Kettler? Is it K-E-T-T-L-E-R? It is. Okay. And Jane, what is your address? I live at 1503 Terry Court in the town of Wilson. Terry Court, and you might want to pull that mic a little bit closer to you so they can all hear you. Can you get it? That should be good. And go ahead and bend it. Does it work okay? Joe, you want to help? That should do. Maybe move we'll the. We'll try that. Is it okay? All right. Go ahead. I'm here tonight on behalf of the Sheboygan River Basin Partnership and in regards to two resolutions which will be brought forth later this evening. The Sheboygan River Basin Partnership is an alliance of conservation and environmental groups, local businesses, local, state, and federal agency staff, and concerned individuals. The partnership's goals are to improve water quality and preserve natural resources within the Sheboygan River Basin. This is being accomplished through public education and habitat restoration. One of our restoration projects is the Fisherman's Creek Corridor. This is a two and a half mile stream in the southern part of the city and the town of Wilson, originating near the Green Wing stormwater ponds. The stream discharges to the Black River within the Jervin Conservancy in the town of Wilson. This project fo focuses on the lower one and a half miles of the stream corridor. Primary landowners along the lower one and a half miles of the stream corridor are Alliant Energy, the town of Wilson, and the city of Sheboygan. Over the years, Fisherman's Creek has been channelized. Channelization combined with increased development all along the corridor has increased the risk of flooding. In fact, several homes along the North Creek Bank at the east end of Camelot Boulevard were severely affected in the storm of August 1998, and the city subsequently purchased those lots along the river. The Basin Partnership has developed a concept plan which was presented to the public last summer. The Basin Partnerships hopes to re-meander the stream and reconnect it to the floodplain to improve surface water management and reduce the risk of flooding in the future. 
The Sheboygan River Basin Partnership also has plans to remove fish barriers and non-native species and rehabilitate the in-stream and shoreline habitat. Public access will be provided via a non-motorized multi-use path through the corridor. The first phase of the project included stream assessments and monitoring and creation of the concept plan. The first phase was funded through grants from the Wisconsin Coastal Management Program and the Sheboygan County Stewardship Fund. The next step is to produce an engineered design and construction documents. The Sheboygan River Basin Partnership is now applying for grants from the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative and Great Lakes Basin Fish Habitat Partnership to fund this engineering phase. The Sheboygan River Basin Partnership is not looking to the city of Sheboygan for funds, but because a large portion of the shoreline near Camelot Boulevard and South 12th Street is owned by the city of Sheboygan, the Sheboygan River Basin Partnership is looking for support and site access from the city of Sheboygan. In turn, the project will benefit the city in terms of stormwater management and improved environmental health. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, Jane. <clears throat> That's it. That's all for public forum. Um, now comes my favorite part of the evening, the mayor's announcements time. Uh, under mayor's announcements, uh, first of all, we do have a committee of the whole meeting tomorrow evening. It was scheduled for 5 o'clock. However, now it's been rescheduled for 6.30, and it will be televised, so everybody please tune in. Also, um, we do have, and this is uh, courtesy of Chad Pelashek from our uh, Department of Development, uh, we were uh, awarded uh, some NARSA grants for facade renovation and landscaping programs. Uh, this is basically in the uh, area uh, which is bordered by 9th Street to North 13th Street and Ontario Avenue to Superior Avenue. Uh, this particular program uh, landlords and single family property owners may be eligible to receive a grant up to $5,000 maximum uh, to assist in the facade renovation of some of these uh, uh, older and uh, older properties that are, are definitely in need of some TLC. Uh, grants uh, will be awarded on a competitive basis. Obviously, if you are interested, uh, please do call the planning department at 459-3383. Chad Pelashek is the person to speak to. Uh, applications are due by 4 o'clock p.m. on March 5th. This is a great program. Also, at the same time, we do have uh, a group coming together um, that is, uh, has been meeting on a regular basis and will continue to meet uh, that we are looking. Uh, I know Todd Preeby is here from the police department. Uh, we have the uh, uh, Sheboygan Neighborhood Pride groups involved. We have the Love Your City group, several faith-based organizations that are all coming together as one group. And uh, the Gateway neighborhood is going to be the uh, point of interest to uh, get some volunteer, uh, volunteer labor out there to uh, help revitalize this neighborhood. Uh, we are looking at, according to the Love Your City folks so far, somewhere around 50,000 hours they think that they can provide in volunteer labor hours over the course of the summer. Uh, I encourage more groups to become involved. They are reaching out to other uh, community organizations and faith-based organizations to become part of this. Uh, this is in its infancy, but it's all coming together, and it'll be a great thing for our, 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 the heart of our city, our older neighborhoods. Also coming up, and this is one of my favorite announcements right here, um, we have the uh, Mayor's uh, International Committee uh, Sister City Tour of Esslingen, uh, Esslingen, Germany, which is our sister city. This will be from May 17th through the 29th. Uh, it will be uh, led by uh, Dieter Helm. Some of you are familiar with him. And the Mayor's International Committee, and me being the mayor, I get to go also. So it's gonna be uh, a good time. We are going to go to Esslingen. Also in Esslingen is going to be the 40th anniversary of the People to People Exchange Program between the city of Sheboygan and Esslingen. I myself was on that program 30 years ago. So uh, 30 years ago I was on the program, it's the 40th anniversary, and we are going to be having a reunion of all exchange students over the last 40 years from both Sheboygan and Esslingen in Esslingen. So that should be a good time. Uh, we are also going to go to the cities of Salzburg, Munich, Innsbruck, Mittenwald, Heidenberg, Rotenburg. Uh, we're also going to do the uh, Dolomites and Lake Garda in uh, Italy. And uh, for those of you that, that are uh, crystal collectors, we are going to, turn, to tour the uh, Swarovski uh, Crystal Museum and Factory, which they'll probably have discounts there. 
Um, as I said, May 17th through the 29th, uh, a little over $3,000 per person, 12 days and nights, everything included, including flight hotels, uh, most meals, and, uh, and a good time. Uh, anybody who is interested in this can call the mayor's office, or if you'd like uh, more uh, information, you can call uh, Dieter Helm at 467-3230. I would advise the mayor's office, there's usually somebody there, uh, namely uh, Mary Rager, uh, a bit more often. Thank you on that. Um, one other uh, thing I wanted to discuss here before we get into the swearing in of our police, of our, of our new police chief, Chief Domogalski, I wanted to speak about uh, the strate Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee, which has been meeting uh, the last uh, several weeks over the new table of organiz organization I have proposed for the city. Uh, nine months ago, I was elected to this office, the office of Mayor of Sheboygan. And I was elected by the majority of the citizens in this city, 60%. I was elected by the majority of the citizens in all eight districts and in all 16 wards. I was elected by the majority of the citizens in every ward, in every district in this city. Now I am proposing a table of organization while, that will allow me to do my job as mayor in this city to the best of my ability. In the meantime, I have a lot of people out there, um, some of them concerned citizens, uh, some of them obviously just not pleased with me as the mayor, uh, that are pushing forward uh, a city administrator to lead our city rather than having the mayor leading our city. I did not run for this position as a city administrator. I ran for this position to be the mayor of Sheboygan and to lead this city. This table of organization will allow me to do so. And this is why I brought it forward. We've been working on this many months. This is, not, this is nothing I all of a sudden woke up one morning and said this will be a great idea. I was elected to run this city. I was elected to lead this city. And I intend to do so. When I was elected, I appointed aldermen last April based upon their ability, their knowledge, and their experience. I appointed them to committees in the city based upon that. I did not appoint aldermen to committees in the city based upon politics. As a matter of fact, of the five standing committees in this city, two of the five alder persons supported my opponent in the election. However, I won that election. I didn't play politics. Instead, I tried to build, tried to foster a sense of cooperation amongst this council to move this city forward. Now I'm at times second guessing my wisdom in that. Because it seems that we're allowing individual agendas and politics to get in the way of moving our city forward. I did not appoint people to positions based on politics. I did it based upon ability. And now is no time to play politics. If the public wants a city administrator in the city, I think the public should have the right to vote on that. Put it to a public referendum. In the meantime, I was elected to lead this city. And I intend to do so. So I'm asking that you as aldermen, and especially the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee, who are the five members of the standing committees in this city, move this forward and bring it to the council for a vote. This is what I need to do my job properly. I will be the mayor of this city for the next three and a quarter years, and I intend to lead this city. I hope that we can start anew put politics aside, and start moving forward for the citizens of our city and for the future of our city. This will allow me to concentrate on development. Development is the key to bringing our city out of the financial ruin that we're in right now. This will allow me to do so. This is what I campaigned on. So please allow me to do my job. Please move this forward. I thank you for that. Alderman Bourne? 
Thank you, Mayor Ryan. <clears throat> if I could just expand on one of your earlier announcements on the committee of the whole meeting tomorrow night, I just want to let the citizens know what two of the three, two of the three topics are going to be. Uh, two of the three topics are going to be on the ambulance service, and one of them is going to be a presentation by uh, Chief Herman and Commander Butler on the manpower allocations for the ambulance service. And the second report is going to be from our finance director, Terry Hansen, on the uh, financial, a financial report on the ambulance service through the third quarter of this year, comparing it to 2008. Uh, I think this will be probably one of the most complete reports that the council and the citizens has received yet to this date. And I encourage everybody to tune in tomorrow night on television at 6.30. And let's uh, also, if you can attend, come to the meeting. And I encourage, uh, I encourage you to think of any questions that you want to ask uh, during the course of that meeting. So again, I think it's very important. It provides the transparency that our citizens have been, a have been asking for. And it's a good opportunity for the aldermen to ask questions and also the, th the citizens. Thank you very much, Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Horn. Now, for happier times, we have a new police chief that is going to be sworn in this evening. His name is Chris Domogolski. We welcome him, his wife, Karen, and his children, which I lost in my stack of things here. Also, we have his, his parents. His, uh, we have his father, Donald, and his mother, <coughs> Kathleen, here. Karen is, is, is Chris's wife. We also have his children. Andrea, Austin, Allie, Adam, and Ava. I guess they never got to the bees in the uh, <laughs> second, second page of the name book. Good job, Chris. Um, Chris Domogolski comes from Milwaukee. Uh, he comes in uh, highly regarded as a person and as a police officer and as our chief. I'd like to welcome everybody here from Chris's family and from, uh, from uh, the Milwaukee Police Department. I take it some of you folks are from there. Either that or he's got a lot of friends. Which, Probably wouldn't be a bad thing either. So if Chris can come up along with uh, his family, we can get the ball rolling. Also, let me say right now that afterward, immediately after the swearing in, uh, so you don't have to listen to everything else that actually happens in this city, uh, there will be uh, cake and coffee and beverages on lower level, I believe, in the lower level training room, which is also uh, one ground below ground floor here. So if uh, anybody who would like to attend that immediately following the swearing in, please do so. Chris, Yeah, come on up. I'm going to pin this on you so you're mic'd for the TV. Or would you think that you have it right here? Over here, Allie. There you go. You just all kind of stand over here. Yeah, I definitely need my glasses. <laughs> okay. Chris, would you raise your right hand and repeat after me? I, Christopher Domogolski. Hi, Christopher Domogolski. Who has been appointed. Who has been appointed. To the Office of Chief of Police. To the Office of Chief of Police. Swear that I will support. Swear that I will support. The Constitution of the United States. Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And will faithfully discharge. And will faithfully discharge. The duties of said office. The duties of said office. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Okay, we're going to have um, Chris's dad, Donald, do the pinning of the badge on. Should I stick them? Don't stab them. 
Well, I'm, I'm a lot older, so I can't, I don't have the strength anymore. I won't stab him, I won't stab him. <laughs> Mayor Ryan, council members, police and fire commissioners, department members, citizens of Sheboygan. I am honored to have been appointed as the chief of police in the city of Sheboygan and thankful for the opportunity to serve. I understand that it is a privilege to lead the men and women of the Sheboygan Police Department. It is a privilege I take very seriously. I wish to thank the members of the department and city government who have so warmly welcomed me, and I would also like to thank my family and friends who have so strongly supported me in this endeavor. The police exist to prevent crime, fear, and disorder in our neighborhoods. To accomplish this mission, the Sheboygan Police Department will employ a community-based, neighborhood-focused, preventative policing strategy that engages in problem-solving and collaborative relationship building develop long-term solutions rather than apply band-aids to our problem neighborhoods. Our measure of success will not be our number of arrests or our response time to non-emergency calls. Our measure of success will be vibrant neighborhoods where there is an absence of crime. To the men and women of the police department, I'm committed to developing your potential as leaders. I understand and firmly believe that cops can make a difference, and that your work has meaning. I will encourage and support responsible risk-taking on behalf of the public good. And I understand that the police department does not exist to avoid mistakes, but rather to achieve something important. I will recognize good work, assume goodwill, and treat honest mistakes differently than misconduct. I will do all that I can to see that you are properly trained, equipped, supervised, and supported. What I expect from you is that your first and only loyalty be to the city of Sheboygan. I expect you to be leaders and guardians of the honor of policing. I expect you to demonstrate the values of integrity, courage, commitment, compassion, restraint, and respect for your department, yourself, each other, and your community. To the community, I pledge the police department will be open, accountable, and responsive to your concerns. What I expect in return is for every neighborhood to understand that safe neighborhoods are the result of the people and their police working together. Safe neighborhoods are not created by standing on the sidelines. Creating safe neighborhoods is everyone's responsibility. I look forward to a close relationship with the mayor, common council, and police and fire commission. I will be an advocate for the needs of the police department, but I also realize I will sometimes be competing for scarce resources. I pledge to be a good steward and manage the resources you provide to the department in a prudent manner. I will take your needs issues and concerns seriously and strive to respond to them appropriately. I believe together we can make Sheboygan the safest city of its size in this country. Thank you.
watch my name. Okay, everybody, we do have uh, cake and refreshments uh, in the uh, basement, the lower level, oh, the lower level training room, that's right. It's not a basement, and, and the council is not recessed either. <laughs> We, we will give this a couple minutes so that people can clear out, so. That doesn't mean it has to be done. Wow, we're empty. <laughs> okay, moving on. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Moving on, uh, we do have a public hearing. This is a hearing to amend the city's zoning map to change the use district classification of the property located at 2021 North Avenue from Class UI Urban Industrial to Class UC Urban Commercial Classification. Do we have anyone, anybody that would like to speak on this issue? Do we have anybody that would like to speak on this issue? And for the last time, do we have anybody that would like to speak on this issue? President Gisha. I move that the hearings be closed. Second, second. We have a motion and a second to close the hearings. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? That is a fast hearing. The consent agenda. President Gisha. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I move to accept and file our, all reports of officers, accept and adopt all reports of committees, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. We have a motion and a second on 20-1 through 20-11. Under discussion? Mm -hmm. Roll call, please. Bourne? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. And Wangeman? Aye. 16 eyes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions. 20-12 through 20-13 to be referred. Reports of officers to 20-14 by the city attorney. Submitting a communication from the law firm of Olson, Cloet, Gunderson, and Conway advising that its hourly rate for services performed per, for the city will be increasing to $140 per hour effective January 1 2010. Motion to accept and file. Second. We have a motion to accept and file and a second under discussion. All eyes. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 20-15 by the City Plan Commission. Recommending approving the Sheboygan 2010-2014 Consolidated Plan for Housing and Community Development Utilizing Community Development Block Grant Funds through the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the RO be accepted and placed on file. Second. And the resolution. And the resolution. And be the resolution be put upon passage. Sorry. 
And a second. We have a motion to accept and file and put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. No discussion. Roll call, please. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. And Boren? 16 ayes. Motion carries 20-16 by the Director of Human Resources and Labor Relations giving his executive summary of the 2009 contract negotiations. President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of officer be accepted and filed. Second. We have a motion and a second. Under discussion? Alderman Hanna. Yeah, I just wanted to take a minute to, to publicly thank uh, our human resources director and also the members of the committee for I don't think the public understands the hours that are put in by the volunteers uh, in doing this work and I think they did a fantastic job I, I do agree with you thank you Alderman Hanna uh, there was literally hundreds of man hours put into these negotiations I believe that uh, the end result was uh, positive both for the city and for our labor groups and uh, I, did, I, I again thank everybody in the, on the committee, uh, especially Tom Rice and Alderman Gisha, who spent more time there than any, anybody on the council. I think Jim would like to do it again. Yeah, we're going to appoint him to that position. We're going to change the rules for next year and make him do it. So. <laughs> Alderman Gisha. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I'd also like to thank Alderperson Kittleson for uh, her leadership in, in the role on the committee. Uh, as well, she was sitting in for the uh, uh, for the uh, seller and grievance committee chairperson, and uh, in uh, in echoing a specific thanks that Alderman Hanna placed on uh, uh, the acting director Rice or contracted director Rice, whatever you want to call it, uh, uh, it was a pleasure, and uh, it was interesting because we we all butted heads on a number of the issues that we're going through uh, in our caucus. It was a very vibrant caucus, um, and uh, and it was most welcomed by Tom. And it was a it was a great uh, and and Mary, you uh, popped your head in a few times as well uh, as to, as things were going on. And um, it was very vibrant and aggressive within our caucus on certain things. Um, I think maybe a, a testament to the work that was done, and I'll put this on Tom, and not necessarily the committee as as a whole, small C, is that. Uh, uh, it was quite contentious at times, as those things are, but I think all labor leaders would agree that it, and have said that this was the, uh, one of the uh, finest, um, well-run, um, consensus-building events uh, from a contract negotiation standpoint that they would ever have, and many of them have been through many, 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 many uh, of those uh, contract negotiations with the city. So. Um, I called Tom sometimes, we talked on Sunday or we talked on Saturday or talked in the evening uh, on many of the issues and uh, as well as I'm sure other members of the committee did as well and uh, I just want to thank him and what a great honor it is it was to work with him on the project. Thank you, uh, President Gisha and may, may I also say that uh, also involved were uh, all of our department heads were also involved in this and uh, in, in speaking of the caucuses, it's a good thing that there aren't recording devices in caucuses. So. <laughs> Uh, that, that, that's a positive thing. So, Alderperson Kittleson. Thanks, Mayor. And, and I just uh, thank you, uh, Alderman Gisha. Uh, it was a great learning experience for me as well to sit there on the committee. I think that we were um, uh, all very thankful to have Tom Rice uh, come to us at a time when <laughs> we really needed uh, his leadership and, uh, and his skill. And he did come to us at the right time. And, and I think, it, uh, as I said, it was a great learning experience. I wish every alderman would have an opportunity to sit in on union negotiations and really see what that, that process is all about. So thank you. Thank you, Alder Person Kittleson. And Sorry. President Gisha once again. Sorry, I apologize. I told you it would be a long meeting. Well, it, these things, you're right, and, and maybe this is dragging on, and I agree it probably does, but this no, has a substantial I'm impact. I'm just kidding you. No, I all night no, if you'd no, like. That's fine. Uh, as some might think a surprise coming from me, I want to thank our uh, labor partners uh, in this. I went in with a with a uh, not so favorable mindset. 
uh, as hearing past experiences and reading arbitration reports and trying to do some homework ahead of time, I found them to be aggressive, but in the end, I think they made some excellent decisions for the taxpayers and for the citizens of Sheboygan uh, in some of the agreements that we reached. There are certain things we couldn't do, wouldn't do, from a budgetary standpoint or structural standpoint, uh, things that you would think would derail a process, but each union head and their team, uh, I think, very, gave it fair thought and came to good resolutions on a, on a great many of those points. And I wanted to publicly thank them as well. And I agree. I mean, for, uh, for us to have uh, seven contracts up all at the same time, and for all of them uh, to settle in agreements and none of them going to, uh, to uh, mediation and arbitration is, is something to be said for, for both sides of the table, both the uh, city negotiating side and, uh, and the, the, the labor groups on the other side of the table. Alderman Bob. Mr. Mayor, just so we don't become a self-licking ice cream cone here, I'm, I'm, I'm going to offer uh, some comments as well. Uh, I, too, want to give kudos to Tom Rice and Jim Gisha and Gene. Uh, again, the city, you just have no idea the complex amount of hours that, that these people put in, and our labor partners as well. Nobody, I, and nobody was more surprised and frustrated by this process than what rookie Alderman Bauck learned at the negotiating table last summer and early this fall. It's a very frustrating process, but it was treated with respect, and, uh, and our labor partners, again, they're just doing what they're paid to do. The system is what the system is. The system it was set up outside of the city of Sheboygan. It was set up in Madison, and both sides, the city side and the labor union side, were just negotiating within the bounds of the system the way it's set up to, uh, to negotiate. So uh, it's a good agreement. Both sides gave as much as they could uh, and kept a very good relationship, which is probably the most important thing to come out of it. And if you're frustrated at all, if you're an interested citizen that have read the documents, if you're frustrated at all by what the documents contain, tonight is not the night to have that discussion. Tonight is the night to thank uh, the older persons that were very involved in Tom Rice and the labor partners. It's, it's time to thank them and approve these uh, approve these labor union contracts and if you don't like what they say November is the time to get involved for you know to take your passion harness it and get involved in the November election because it's the people that we send to Madison that affect the mediation arbitration laws that govern the process so and thank you Mr. Mayor for your leadership you were uh, you were also very involved in setting the direction way back as early as last uh, May June so thank you for your leadership as well Thank you, uh, Alderman Bauk, and uh, I'll have to remember that self-licking ice cream cone line. That's a good one. I'm going I'm to use that one in the future. Thank you. Okay, we have uh, no more discussion on this issue. Uh, all in favor of uh, accepting and filing, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. To be referred, uh, 2017 through 20-30. We have an exception, Alderman Bob. And at the risk of becoming a self-licking ice cream cone, I want to take a moment here to thank, to thank Alderman Gisha. Uh, uh, outside of the bounds of, of this council chamber, he and I happen to be friends, but, but just as older persons, uh, items 23 through 27 and item 2066, there are six sex offenders that want to live in our city. And over the past year, since Alderman Gisha put two years worth of work into rewriting that sex offender uh, uh, registry that we have now or the process we have so that it goes to public protection and safety. Just huge kudos. This is making a difference. Every citizen in Sheboygan knows there are six sex offenders that want to come live in our city again. This meeting alone, we probably see two or four of these every two weeks. And the only reason the citizens know about this in the very public way that they do and that those sex offenders have to get permission to come back into our city limits is because of the hard work of, uh, of Alderman Gisha. And beyond all the financially important things he's done for us over the past year, year and a half, this is probably a legacy that uh, you know, will be important to this city for a long time to come. Thank you, Alderman Gisha. Thank you, uh, Alderman Bauk. And, uh, and, and because of Alderman Gisha, Alderman Hanna has the, <laughs> has, has the luck of uh, having uh, these individuals at his Public Protection and Safety Committee. Two things, Mr. Mayor. I, I want to thank Alderman Gisha for crafting <laughs> this. I'm, I'm particularly pleased 
that he had it set up so it all comes to public protection and safety. <laughs> and would I be outside of the bounds of, of reason to suggest that perhaps next year he chair public protection <laughs> and safety I just, with his skill set? Point of order. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> We'll see how that strategic fiscal planning <laughs> meeting goes later in the week. Yes. We'll make that decision from there. <laughs> okay, and we have probably somebody with a little bit more true insight, Alderperson Clyunis. So I, uh, I wasn't supposed to more, lift more than 10 pounds after surgery, and uh, I was wondering about this report, 10, 2028, why we all had to receive this survey. Um, <laughs> Is there some precedent or something? Why we couldn't this have just been given to the committee and not run through here? And this uh, this is a, almost a ream, half a ream here. Right. Yeah. Uh, this was uh, this went through the Marina and Harbor Committee yeah. as as a uh, um, the boater satisfaction survey uh, went to the Marina and Harbor Committee and somebody on the committee made the recommendation that it does come to council. Um, no, I didn't realize it would be the entire package like this, but uh, if you, you know, overall, if we look at the ratings of our marina, which is, the marina is always a contentious point in the, uh, in city politics, so to speak, um, the overall ratings of our marina are favorable. People that, uh, that come there, people that stay there, um, they have a, uh, they have a, a good, uh, good image of our marina, and I think that's why the committee wanted it, uh, wanted it forwarded. Mayor. But it, it, it would be appropriate for something to have on a laptop. But then we don't have laptops, so that's a different story. Mayor. Thank you, Alder Person Clayness. Okay. Our city clerk. I will just make a comment. Thank you, Jean, for saying that. Paulette and I talked about this. I will tell you that this document was six to seven reams of paper alone, yes. just so that the public knows this is just one document out of 80. Yes. I understand that the Marine and Harbor Committee wanted this, but this may be something to look at in the future that we may not want to be doing this. Or we may want to look at laptops. <laughs> right. right. Okay, that's all I have to say. But that's another discussion. <laughs> that's another night. Okay. Moving on. We were, uh, that was 22 through 2030. We have resolutions introduced three. 20-31 by Alderperson Clyunis supporting the Sheboygan River Basin Partnership application for funds from the Great Lakes Basin Fish Habitat Partnership. Alderperson Clayunas. Thank you, Mayor. I would like to uh, ask for a suspension of rules on 2031 and 2032. Uh, the reason is that they need to get our uh, support in order to, get, to make the deadlines for some applications. Again, as was re presented, no money involved. It's just showing that the city of Sheboygan is supporting this group. Second. We have a motion and a second on suspension of the rules. Uh, is anybody opposed to suspending the rules? Any discussion on suspension of the rules? The rules are suspended. Thank you. Okay. I move that resolution number, um, that the two resolutions be uh, approved. 2031 and 2032. And 2032. We have a suspension and a motion to approve 20-31 and 20-32. Under discussion? Alderman Rinfleisch? Oh, uh, I was just going to ask if we could take 2032 at the same time as 2031, and she was way ahead of me. So, <laughs> thank you. So, we are, uh, we have a motion and a second to pass 2031 and 2032. Any further discussion? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Alderman Bob? It's not. Uh, yeah, please. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. I just ask uh, Alderperson Clayness uh, uh, what the difference between the two is. What are the, I was looking for subtle wording differences and just couldn't find any. Uh, they, they have to do with two different applications. Um, when I look this over to weeks ago, they were talking about the two It's the first paragraph. The first paragraph, Great Lakes Restorative uh, Initiative and Great Lakes Basin. Fish habitat okay. Otherwise, everything else is the same. Okay, and those are two different potential sort, two different yes. potential sources of funds. Yes. Okay. Thank right. you. Two different applications. Any further discussion? No further discussion. All in favor of passing, say aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion carries. Twenty, thirty-three. 2034, 35, um, 37, 38, and 39 are all dealing with um, passing the, the uh, labor contracts. 
Uh, 20-36, we need a motion to file because 20-36 is dealing with transit. the Amalgamated Transit Union, um, which uh, is actually approved by the Transit, transit Commission, Commission and not by the Council. So if we can have a motion first to file 20-36. I move the, the 2036 to be filed. Second. We have a motion and a second to file 20-36. No. All in favor of filing 2036 say aye. 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 Opposed? 20-36 is filed. Now we have okay. Vice President Heidemann. Thank you. I move the resolution 2030 to 2033 through 2035 and 2037 through 2039 be passed. We have a motion and a second on passing the resolutions. Under discussion, we have Alderman Bourne. Uh, thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, I don't have any problem on voting on these as a group because I support them, but if there are any other older persons that have any difficulties with any of the individual contracts, uh, then I think we should speak up and take a separate vote on those. I support them, but I just want to give other older persons the opportunity right. that we're, we're not just ramming these all through. If somebody has an objection, let's vote on one of them separately. And that is why we are under discussion at the moment. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. Alder Person Clayonis. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, not a, d a difficulty, but um, out of the ice cream idea, I'll just from Cone, I think the city employees got a good deal. I don't want it to sound like, you know, we didn't give them some good things here. Um, I was looking, I looked through all of the agreements this weekend, and uh, there are some um, interesting concessions that we gave. Uh, we, we didn't come empty-handed, we did give some concessions. And especially certain unions uh, seem to have quite a detailed uh, contract that they uh, asked the city to approve and to negotiate. So I think we came up, we, we gave a lot. There's a lot of things in here that a lot of city uh, people, citizens would love to see in their labor agreement or their, their um, um, you might say, a, a pay, pay plan in their, in their job. So I don't, I'm not ashamed of these at all. And I think that uh, the city employees should be grateful for what we did in the circumstances that we faced. Thank you, Alder Person Clionis. Any further discussion? If there is none, we are uh, pass. Uh, un we are. We have a motion to pass 20-33 through 20-35 and 20-37 through 20-39. Roll call, please. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Koth. Kittleson, Clayunis, Montemayor, Aye. Rinfleisch, Aye. Zurich, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Vu, Aye. Wangeman, Aye. Boren, Aye. Bauk, Aye. and Bowers. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries 20 40 by Alder Persons. Heidemann, Kittleson, Bauk, Gisha, and Koth adopting the City of Sheboygan policy for vacant positions and promotions. Vice President Heidemann. I move to put the resolution upon this passage. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Joe. We have Alderman Bowers or Alderman Vice President, would you like to speak move, first? Yeah, I'd like to move to amend the resolution. Okay, we have a motion to amend. Um, please okay. speak. Okay, I'd like to add subsection F. Notwithstanding the above vacant positions subject to the council imposed hiring fees shall not be filled without common council approval. I'm going to make that. It's I'm going to be that added. Amendment. So we're talking on the second page. Um, after E, we are going to do subsection F. Sub is what you're F. looking to do. Yep. On page two, subsection F. Can you repeat that, please? Okay. Notwithstanding the above vacant positions, subject to the council imposed hiring freeze, shall not be filled without common council approval. We have <coughs> Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a quick question. Would that be a two-thirds vote on something like that because it would change the budget or no? Just a, just a majority. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. We have Alderman Bowers. Yes, I was under the impression that we, uh, we weren't going to hire anybody. So this is for what, uh, vacant positions? Um, this is a vacant. Uh, Attorney McLean, would you like to answer that? Or Sure. Go ahead. 
this is a, a, a policy regarding filling vacant positions. Uh, what the amendment is, is to add a provision, be, because the council has adopted a hiring freeze, uh, in order to lift the freeze to fill any particular vacancy, it's gonna need council approval, and that wasn't addressed in the, in the policy. But the policy itself is consistent with city ordinances already as far as the process for filling vacancies. Thank you. Next we have uh, President Gisha. Thank you. Just so everybody knows, this isn't a new policy or document. The city of Sheboygan has had this policy with the exception of some changes that Tom, uh, Director Rice, and the committee upgraded it. But we've had the policy for a long time. It hasn't necessarily been completely adhered to for a long time. And this kind of brings it back up and freshens it up to uh, the reality of the day. Thank you. Yes, this is the uh, uh, vacant position approval form that has basically just been updated to, uh, mm -hmm. to our modern times here. We need a second Thank you. On that amendment. Second. Thank you. Oh, we have a motion and a second on the <laughs> amendment. And that's basically what we should be discussing now is the amendment. Yes. Is there any other discussion on the amendment? President, uh, Alder Person Kittleson? Thank you, Mayor. Okay, and it, so we're adding F, not be filled without common council approval. And, and that's for internal promotions as well? For every, are you speaking for everything? I mean, I don't think that council Vice is. President Heidemann, will you answer that, please? That's, that's what it's dealing with. We need to clean up that, uh, that ordinance to be able to put that language in there. So it'd be internal also. Internal also. Yep. We've never done that before, correct? Not that I know. And so we're, this is just, this is just a, just new added because mm -hmm. it cleans it up or, or just the reason being can. Well, this is on the hiring freeze. So it would be hiring somebody to fill a vacancy, not. Not an internal, pro, not, not an internal promotion. Okay, no. so if we're hiring somebody to fill, fill that vacant because yeah. of the hiring mm -hmm. freeze, that's right. all we're speaking of, right. not yeah. on internal promotions or anything like that, correct? Right. I don't know. Got the Who have we got? Chief back there, maybe we want to uh, that. Chief Herman, I see a reaction out of you. Would you like to speak on this? Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, it was my understanding through the committee meeting that this is also for internal promotions, correct? That that was the change from from the form of the year before. If we may call up uh, Acting Director Tom Rice, if we can have a motion to open the floor. Tom is not a true department head. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Floor is open. Uh, the purpose of the change uh, that I uh, proposed and the Salaries and Grievance Committee uh, moved to the council was uh, twofold. Number one, uh, to take and improve communication and the chain of command down so that the mayor, the uh, HR director, and the director of finance were in the loop in terms of uh, potential new hires or uh, promotions to make sure that the money was in the budget, that it was something that we had, uh, had planned for and so forth. Uh, and secondly, I had not anticipated uh, common council approval on promotions, but certainly common council approval on anything that would be a new hire uh, uh, because of the, the freeze that we have currently. So that's what I anticipated when I put it together and what, how I presented it to the Salaries and Grievance Committee. Thank you, uh, Director Rice. Uh, we have uh, President Gisha, and thank you, Chief Herman. Not so quick, Tom. <laughs> It might be helpful if we walk through maybe two scenarios. One is somebody gets promoted, so there's an opening below it. That would then, and please, I'm waiting for you to correct me, that would then be subject to a new hire to fill the vacancy below it, but the promotion would not be subject to council approval. That would be follow our, our ordinance and uh, policy and be uh, left up to the sign off by the department head, sign off by you, sign off by mayor, and then to salary and grievance. And the director of finance. And the director of finance. That's and approved the by the salaries from, and grievance. From what That's our correct. old policy used to be. So that, is that, was that how things would work? That's correct. Okay. That is correct. 
And is that your intention, uh, Vice President Heideman, with this, uh, with this, this uh, amendment? Okay. Are we all clear on that? Mm -hmm. uh, Alderman Rayfleisch, done. Thank you, President Gisha. Okay, so this is a vote on the amendment only. Do we? Can we do all eyes on the amendment? Well, oh, we can. Um, all in favor of the amendment, say aye. Aye. Opposed. The amendment carries. Vice President Heideman. I move that the resolution be uh, as amended be passed. Second. We have a motion and a second to pass the resolution as amended. Under discussion? No discussion. Roll call, please. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clyunas? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. And Gesha? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 21-20-41 has been withdrawn. 20-40. Uh, 42 through 20-45 lies over. 20-46 um, uh, through 20-50 to be referred. However, 20-49 will be discussed by Alderperson Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Um, I would like to make a motion here to suspend the rules. Thank you, and the reason being is that the work is ready to be done on this. Uh, they, they authorized the signing of the easement for this municipal storm sewer, and uh, work is ready, ready to start. We have a motion and a second on suspending the rules. Is anybody opposed to the rules being suspended? Nobody is opposed, the rules are suspended. Thank you, then I would make a motion to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage. Under discussion? Under discussion, um, I know this is the easement for the White Fox Drive drainage swale project, which we did approve in December, and uh, the uh, uh, contractor is already in place and ready to begin the work tomorrow. And we are looking forward to that, at least I know my yes, office is. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you very much, Alder Person Kittleson. Thank you. And I imagine that Public Works is uh, looking forward too. to this being passed also. <laughs> is there a second? Do we get a second? Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Roll call, please. Heideman? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clyunas? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. And Hannah? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. We have 20-51. Uh, report of committee. Six, by finance recommending approving the Mead Public Library Board's reserve fund and liability transfer agreement and to change the amount from 459,233 to 443,952. President Gisha. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Uh, Your Honor, I just want to clarify the difference between the two numbers is as we were finalizing this transaction, um, somebody retired. Right. So in this gray area mix, we felt it was best to come back with some accurate numbers. And, and along with them returning this money, we accepted the, the, the uh, retirement liability, Correct. et cetera. Alderman Bulk, or Alderman Bourne, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, thank you, Alderman Gisher, for making that clarification because I have a constituent in the, in the audience that whenever there's a, a dollar change made on any uh, resolution, she wants to know the reason. So there it is, Marge. I hope you got it. There you that. go, Marge. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Alderman Bourne. <laughs> any further discussion? Roll call, please. Kittleson? Aye. Kalyanis? Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Belk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. And Koth? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Reports of committees 7 by finance, 20-52 by finance, recommending filing ordinance establishing Article 11 of Chapter 26 in the Municipal Code creating a residential re rental inspection program. 
President Gisha. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and a second under discussion. Thank you very much. Oh, we do have discussion. <laughs> Alderman Vu. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I had uh, several constituents call and they had concern about the uh, re residential rental inspection program because that will impact the tenants or renters if the, uh, if the landlords would have to pay more to repair up to the codes, that will increase the fees. Mm -hmm. So who will pay the fees is going to be the tenants. So then that's, I think that's the reason. So for this case, I'm not in support of this program. Right. Thank you, Alderman Vu. This is actually filing it that it will not pass. Thank you. Um, any other discussion? If there is no other discussion, roll call, please. Now, an I vote will file it, which means it's not happening. Okay. Clayunas? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? No. Kittleson? Aye. 15 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. 20-53 to be referred. Reports of committees 8. 20-54 by finance recommending authorize an extension of the agreement for interim human resources and labor relations consulting services with HR Unlimited LLC, also known as our own Tom Rice. President Gisha. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I move that the uh, report of committee be accepted and adopted. And the resolution. And the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, as this is now the world headquarters, apparently, for HR Unlimited LLC, uh, uh, this is to extend uh, Tom Rice's for a period of time. We're working on more of a finalized, formalized document that the council will see at a later time. Thank you, Alderman Gisha. And also, if I may say that uh, um, with that position, um, Tom Rice works very well right now. If, uh, if my uh, TO is passed, um, that position will be downgraded to a manager's position from a director's position and uh, it may, uh, may help us in filling that position also in the future. Under discussion, we have Alderman Bowers. Yes, uh, have we had this uh, outfit before? And what is the cost to uh, under contract with them? Uh, the outfit is actually Tom Rice, who is uh, acting as our HR director right now. We're simply extending his contract. I believe the amount is uh, $25,000. Is that uh, what is in this? Yeah. Uh, $25,000, Tom charges the city $75 an hour uh, for his services on a limited basis, and that has been fulfilling our HR needs. So he is HR Unlimited LLC? That yeah. is the name of his company, because being a smart businessman, he's not doing it personally, so you know, he protects himself a little bit there. Thank you, Alderman Bowers. President Gisha. Sorry, real quickly, so the council has some for, uh, forewarning or, or so they know what's going on. The intention is to, uh, is to contract with HR Unlimited LLC, a.k.a. Tom Rice, the guy back there, um, <laughs> for uh, $75,000 a year, and that would exclude any sort of benefits, which is roughly another 52 cents on every dollar. So thus saving the city, you should be getting about thirty dollars to $35,000 a year for uh, what I feel is a uh, certainly a well-qualified uh, service to the citizens and to the employees. And I concur with you. Thank you, President Kisha. Any further discussion? There is no further discussion. May we have a roll call, please? Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Surik. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Vu. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Bowers. No. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Koth. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. And Clionis. Aye. 15 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. 20-55 by finance recommending authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2009 budget, establishing revenue and appropriations for Mead Library Teen Center donation received from Mead Foundation. President Gisha. 
Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted and the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. There's no discussion. Roll call, please. Rinfleisch? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kath? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. And Montemayor? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Reports of Committee 9. 20-56 by finance, recommending amending portions of Chapter 26 of the Municipal Code relating to the establishment of new fees for licenses and permits issued by the Building Inspection Division of the City of Sheboygan. President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted and the resolution, and pardon me, and the general ordinance uh, be put upon its passage. We have a motion and a second under discussion. I'd like to clarify, if I may, Your Honor. Uh, this, uh, the previous document we dealt with was the so termed rental fees. This is a, uh, is a fee increase on a uh, contractor level that we probably should have reviewed two, three years ago. We didn't. We haven't changed anything in about six years. The uh, department, uh, headed by Paula Enders and her team, did a great job of surveying, my goodness, 20, 25 municipalities of our size and our surrounding area. This does not put us as the high price leader. This puts us somewhere in the middle or lower middle on everything to keep us competitive, yet we still have updated uh, those fees for the appropriate amount of expenses that the department goes through. Thank you, President Gisha. Any further discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Born? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah, Aye. Heidemann, Aye. Koth, Aye. Kittleson, Clayunas, Montemayor, Aye. and Rinfleisch. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Uh, Alderman Bowers, are you? Can we have a short recess so I could uh, use the facility? Some yes, some yes we may. We will have a uh, five minute recess. Everybody stretch. Thank you. Second. We have a motion to reconvene the council in a second. <laughs> we have a second. Do we need a vote on that? Just all eyes. Would everybody like to reconvene? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are reconvened. Thank you. Okay, we have, um, I believe we were at 20-57. Yep. Uh, by finance recommending amending portions of Chapter 138.12 the Municipal Code relating to the establishment of new fees for weighing or measuring device licenses issued by the Building Inspection Division of the City of Sheboygan. I believe uh, we are going to have that referred back to public protection and safety. It is uh, premature at best at this time. Yep. So if everybody can mark that, refer to PP&S. 
20-58, by Public Protection and Safety, recommending adding the north side of Main Avenue from North 15th Street West from December 1st to April 1st in the no parking periods regulations. Alderman Hanna. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would uh, move that the RC be accepted and adopted and the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. If there is no, no discussion, roll call, please. Rinfleisch? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. And Montemayor? Aye. 16 ayes. 20 59 lies over. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Ordinance is introduced 10. 2060 through 2063 lies over. 2064 to be re. Backing up, Alderman Hanna. Oh, you were fast. I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules on 20 61. Okay, 20 61 uh, by Alderman, Alderpersons Hanna Rinfleisch, Bauer, Surik, and Wangaman relating to handicapped parking so as to create an on street handicapped parking zone on the west side of South 11th Street, south of Union Avenue. We have a motion to suspend the rules in a second. Is anybody opposed to suspending the rules? Nobody is opposed. The rules are suspended. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion to put the ordinance upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the ordinance upon its passage. Under discussion, we have Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. <clears throat> I want to thank uh, uh, Alderman Hanna and his committee for moving expeditiously on this uh, handicapped parking space. This is for Mr. and Mrs. Shaw that live on South 11th Street and their formerly mm. conjoined twins. Uh, unfortunately, some of the staff over at the middle school during school hours were constantly parking in front of their home and made it very, very inconvenient for Mr. and Mrs. Shaw to take out their sons for doctor's appointments and social activities. And this will go a long ways to helping them uh, accommodate them and make life easier for them, especially during the winter and during the school year. So again, I thank you, Alderman Hanna, and your committee for moving expeditiously on this and by suspending this. Tonight, we can get this uh, handicapped parking space uh, done so that uh, the Shaws can take advantage of it. Thanks again. Thank you, Alderman Boren. Alderman Hanna? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, you know, I'd ask for your support on this. It's a, it's a little change, and the city ordinance is going to make a big difference in the quality of their lives. So thank you. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Any further discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Sir? Aye. Vanderweel? <coughs> Vu? Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. And Rinfleisch? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries 20 64 to be referred to Public Works. Matters laid over 11. 18 3, RO number 357 09 10 by the City Plan Commission. Amending the City of Sheboygan Zoning Map of the Sheboygan Zoning Ordinance to change the use cl district classification of property located at 2021 North Avenue from Class UI Urban Industrial to Class UC Urban Commercial Classification. Alderman Hanna. Well, thank you again, Mr. Mayor. I would first uh, move that the resolution be put upon its passage and that, and that the general ordinance be put upon its passage. We have a motion and a second under discussion. <laughs> if there is no discussion, may we have a roll call vote, please? Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wankaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Clayunas? Montemayor? Rinfleisch? And Surik. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 19 10, resolution number 151 09 10, 
by Alderman Rinfleisch reestablishing a temporary government structure committee as per the action taken by the Common Council on December 31st, 2009 to collect data, study, and make rec recommendations to the Common Council as to the economic and administrative feasibility of making changes to the current structure of city government. Did we make have a council meeting on New Year's Eve? I don't know. Alderman Rinfleisch. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I uh, move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution on, upon its passage under discussion. 21. Hmm? It was on the 21st. Okay. Yeah, just a little uh, typo here that uh, this was uh, December 21st, 2009, not December 31st. It was New Year's Eve. I didn't think I was here for New Year's <laughs> Eve. <but. laughs> <laughs> Alderman Rinfleisch, please continue. <laughs> I don't think I was here for New Year's Eve. I know I didn't go out and have a good time, but I know I wasn't here. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as for the action taken, uh, we discussed in this council, if you recall, taking a longer view uh, of some of the changes that might be uh, could occur uh, and examining the feasibility of those changes within a city structure of government. Um, basically, the makeup as created right now is the same people, uh, and if they are unable uh, according to the resolution, or unwilling to serve, uh, then the mayor's office, uh, as, as general prerogative, will be able to appoint, but based on uh, council's approval, a replacement in that case. Um, uh, the other change for, uh, versus last time around is, uh, unlike the last time we had the government structure committee, where we basically had to wrap it up before the end of this current council term, which would give us a few months, uh, we basically ran out of time to really examine a lot of the other issues that we were uh, trying to look at. Uh, so this structure would actually uh, carry it over to the end of the council term next year, basically a year and a few months. Um, that's also why then if any of these, the, uh, all the persons would no longer be in that position uh, to be appointed, that the mayor also would be able to appoint a replacement for that as well. So it's a longer view that we're taking a look at. Um, city administrator is the fourth uh, issue on there, but it's also city attorney, city clerk, as well as restructuring the common council body are the issues that we're looking at right now. So I ask for your support in... Um, Approving this right now, so we can get back to the work that we have begun last year uh, in um, looking at making the government more efficient and uh, more responsive to the public. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Rinfleisch. Next, we have uh, President Kisha. I'd like to offer an amendment to the document, if I may. Uh, I'd like to add a fifth bullet point that asks the committee to examine the changes that may occur due to uh, redistricting after the census, including common council size committee structure and makeup, and, uh, uh, and, and any other changes that may affect the city uh, after uh, redistricting, uh, which I believe is around 2012. 2012, correct. We have a uh, motion to amend. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second on the amendment. Uh, under discussion on the amendment only. On the amendment? Alderman Bourne, I'm going to turn the lights off. This is on the amendment only. Alderman Rinfleisch. Thank you, Mr. Certainly not opposed to that. That was one issue that uh, we actually discussed. Um, my impression was, when, and when I wrote the uh, resolution, that would be included in the third bullet point, uh, uh, examining changes to the Common Council, including but not limited to the size of the Common Council, voting wards, and other styles of rep representation. I can see why the confusion would be that the, the analysis just looks at representation of the 16 members as it stands right now. Um, but if you would like, to, I'm not opposed to adding the, uh, um, the amendment, uh, but that's something that we did actually discuss in what I thought was under bullet point three, but if we need more clarification, then I'll go, you know, support the, res the amendment. Okay. Um, further discussion on the amendment only. Alderperson Clarenus. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, when does the information come out from the census? Will this committee be finished before that comes out? Alderman uh, Rinfleisch, if you can answer that, please. You're still um, on. Well, the census is this year, obviously. The actual results, I'm not sure when we're going to get the information <laughs> back. I it's, think they're looking some, at, uh, the, they start trickling in in 11, and I believe by 12 they're final, and that's when redistricting yeah. can take place. You know, my impression is that we're not going to be complete before you know, the, the way this committee is set up right now under the current resolution, would, it would expire before we actually get the information back. That does not preclude us, though, from 
pre-examining op opportunities or options and looking at that based on changes within the census. So we won't have the exact numbers, but we could at least plan ahead. Okay, I just, you know, maybe it was a moot point because if we don't get the information, your committee will be closed. Yes. Yeah. Does this committee have a sunset date or is it just... Yes. All the more <laughs> As written, we'll just stay standing for a while. <laughs> As written, the sunset date would be the end of the council year in 2011. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Alder Bristol Clyness, your questions answered? Yes, thank you. Uh, on the amendment only, Alderman Bourne? I saw the document, but not the amendment. Okay, we're going to turn you off again. Still talking about the amendment only. On the amendment only. We need a roll on the amendment? Mm -hmm. Okay, all in favor of the amendment, say aye. Aye. Opposed? The document is amended. Now we have Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. <clears throat> Maybe I should know this because I'm on the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee, but I'm going to ask the question anyway of Alderman Rinfleisch or possibly Attorney McLean. Uh, if the city would go to a city administrator, that could be done, my understanding is that anyway, that that could be done under Mayor Ryan's current term. If we were going to go to a city manager form of government, would that take a ch would that be a charter ordinance to change the what would be the, what would I say the format of city government? If I could just get a clarification on that from either one of you two, please. Thank you. Alderman Rinfleisch, would you like to stand again? Um, information we gathered and reported. Information we gathered and reported last time. Any changes within the. Um, uh, city administrator type position is very similar to the chief operation officer. We can create and we can change the government management structure anytime that we w wish to do so. Call them what we want to call them, have whatever requirements we want to have required on there. It's a very similar process of what the mayor is pro proposing right now. The city manager position is a charter ordinance and that's a different position. Uh, if you recall though that our recommendation was not to go to city manager right. position because right. it really takes away the elected uh, office of the mayor position in that case. Uh, so we could do something within the mayor's term. We cannot change anything within the mayor's position, however, during the term. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Boren and Red Fleisch. Uh, President Gisha? Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to make another amendment to the document, if I may. Okay. Um, <laughs> we'd like to have another amendment to the amendment, amended document. Correct. Uh, I amend to move, remove bullet point number two. And bullet point number two would? In its entirety, and that would be, excuse me, Your Honor, uh, examining the currently elected city clerk position and possible alternatives, including appointment. Um, on the amendment, discussion on the amended amendment only. We have uh, first buzzed in is Alderman Rinfleisch. Thank you. Um, that was one of the issues that we did not have to any time to examine last time. We included it this time, or I included it on writing the resolution this time. Since we were not able to report back to what the council requested, we report back last time. Um, just a quick rundown, though. The, the only really alternative would be because it is such a specific uh, job that's, that there's a lot of training that's involved with that. There's a lot of um, classes and schooling and, and licensing. Well, not licensing, but you have a lot of... <coughs> you know, we call her the nuts and bolts of the exactly. city. Exactly. <laughs> so. um, that um, because the, there has not been um, a lot of contested city clerk uh, elections recently, and generally we uh, end up in this case with a more than qualified and uh, candidate uh, who has been in this position for a while and um, who is just an excellent asset to the city. Sometimes we feel that you know, if we have someone qualified, do we need to have them run all the time, or do we simply appoint somebody who meets certain qualifications? Uh, and that's something that we will analyze under that bullet point at this point in time. Um, because we, we don't have the information. We don't have the, 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 to see what other cities do or don't do if they have a point city clerk or if it's simply an elected office. Thank you, uh, Alderman Rinfleisch. Um, uh, did, we, did we have a, mo a second on the motion yet? We do have a second on the motion, and we are back to uh, President Gisha. Thank you. I just want to explain myself regarding that and possible... Uh, uh, What's the difference then? Why wouldn't you give it a point one as well? Uh, first of all, I, I, I believe there's a, financial, a potential financial component to point one, which I would like to hear from the committee. I do believe we get good value from our current uh, city attorney and um, the, the volume of work he puts out. I, I, I think that's going to be, uh, frankly, my anticipation is that being a moot point. But regarding the city uh, clerk's position, there is no financial component. And anytime you 
you take the voters out of the city and remove them one step more, I think, uh, I think that's bad government. We're talking about city administrator and stuff, which actually takes a lot of stuff and puts it into one person or a team of three versus, uh, uh, regarding your TO. I see us getting away from the people, and I think the more uh, we can encourage people to vote and get involved, the better off we all are. Yeah, I make a motion we get rid of that city administrator thing in there too right away. <laughs> <laughs> Next we have Alderperson Montemayor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. We certainly have a well-qualified city clerk now, but w if and when um, Sue ever retires, I think we should have um, criteria whereby someone who wants to be elected does have to meet that criteria. Because remember in the past, we've had a coroner who had to hire a doctor to do his job for him, even though he got paid the coroner salary over at the county because he was elected. Thank you, Alderperson Montemayor. Next we have Alderman Board. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. It's a question for Sue. Uh, Sue, do city clerks have to have any kind of a state certification to be a, a city clerk? No, it's a, it's a voluntary thing that you choose to do, which most good city clerks do that. So basically, anybody who wanted to run for city clerk could throw their hat in the ring, and there's no, no right. uh, qualifications, professional credentials. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Boren. Uh, Alderman Bowers. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, there should be some uh, requirements for uh, city clerk because uh, I could run for it. If my, my name was Ted Kennedy, I might even win. So, uh, your name were Ted Kennedy, you wouldn't be here. <laughs> <laughs> but there should be some professional requirements written into the uh, city clerk's job, whether it's elected or appointed. So, uh, I'm sure the committee will look into that. Thank you, Alderman Bowers. Oh, uh, let's see. Alderman Bulk, we haven't heard from you in a while. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm just going to say I don't think there's any harm in learning more, and if the committee can learn something and give us both sides of it and let us decide at a later date, I'm, I'm for that. Thank you, Mr. Thank Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Bulk. And uh, I believe the board is cleared at the moment. Um, this will be a vote on the amendment only, the amendment to, re to remove bullet point number two. To remove bullet point number two. A roll call, please. Vu. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Boren. No. Bauk. No. Bowers. No. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. No. Heidemann. No. Koth. No. Kittleson. No. Clionis. No. Montemayor. No. Rinfleisch. No. And Surik. No. Four ayes and 12 noes. Uh, motion fails. Fails. So we are back to the original amended document. And uh, would somebody like to make a motion to put that upon its passage? Alderman Rinfleisch? We'd love to make a motion to put the amended resolution upon its passage. We have a motion and a second to put the amended original resolution, the original resolution amended upon its passage. Under discussion. Alderman Bowers. Yes, could you please read that back? I want to know what I'm voting on, please. Um, the original amendment was by Alderman President Gisha. Uh, would you like to read your amendment? Sure. Do you remember what it was? I usually write these out ahead of time, yeah, so I apologize. <laughs> I didn't do it this time. And that was to, to add bullet point uh, five, uh, examining the changes that may occur to the, uh, to the council and council size due to redistricting uh, post-census. Is that what you have, sir? Sure. That is what it is. <laughs> Did you understand that, Alderman Bowers? No. Okay. Let me give it another shot. <laughs> and that is, we're, we have a census that's gonna go on, starts this year. After that census, redistricting is gonna happen. Everybody expect it, which may mean Council size goes up or down, districts get smaller, larger, change, whatever. Uh, we have to kind of follow the county. It's kind of how it's set up. And uh, I think it would be good for the citizens and for this council and the makeup of 
future committees that we get to jump on that, and this is the perfect opportunity to do it because, frankly, you have a larger, smaller size in the future that makes the future, perhaps, years down the line of a city administrator, perhaps more or less attractive. Uh, it doesn't help us today or for the next few years, but come 2013, 2014. So it's a chance to be a little proactive. Does that answer your question? Very good. Thank you once again, President Kisha. So we have the amended document, and uh, any further discussion on that? If there is none, roll call please on the amended document. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kath? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Kleunis? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rindfleisch? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? And Vu? 16 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law, 20-65, a resolution by Alderman Gisha authorizing the issuance of a request for proposals for emergency medical billing and collection services. President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Uh, Your Honor, this has uh, been in the works for some time. Uh, this is just to formalize a process that's been going on behind the scenes involving a great many people, and that is to just formalize the authorization for us to uh, look at different alternatives in billing companies. Very good. Further discussion? We have Alderman Boren. Uh, thank you, Mayor Ryan. <clears throat> and the reason behind this, uh, going out and looking for possibly a new billing service is because of the performance of our current billing service for the for the ambulance service. And I'm not going to go into it tonight, but it's all the more reason to tune in tomorrow night, uh, committee of the whole meeting, to find out what is actually behind this and what the collections have been uh, this year and last year. Thank you. They call that a teaser in the industry there, Alderman yes. Bourne, when you throw that out there, tune in tomorrow. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. Any further discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Born. Aye. Falk. Aye. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Gisha. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Koth. Aye. Kittleson. Kleunis. Montemayor. Rinfleisch. Zurich. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Vu. Aye. And Wangaman. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 20-66 is referred to PPNS. 20-67 is referred to the Special Committee on Risk Management. 20-68, an RC by the Special Committee on Risk Management recommending denying claim from Susan Seafelt for alleged injuries when she slipped and fell and fractured her wrists on the concrete at the water pad at End Park and directing the city attorney to send a notice of disallowance. Risk Management, Alderman Bowers. I move that the reporting committee be uh, accepted, adopted on, on uh, risk management 20-68. Thank you, Alderman Bowers. We have a motion and a second under discussion. There is no discussion. Roll call, please. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Toth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Kleunis? Montemayor? Aye. Rindfleisch? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel, Vu, Wangman, and Boren. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 20-68, an RC by the Special Committee on Risk Management recommending filing documents submitting a claim from Jeffrey Bemis for alleged damages to his vehicle when a city bucket truck passed too close to his parked car and scrapped. <laughs> obviously a typo. Uh, let's... Change that to scraped and dented the side of his vehicle and paying the amount of the lowest repair estimate, $1,511.58 with the check made payable to Jeffrey Bemis. Alderman Bowers? Uh, I, I believe you referred to uh, document number 2069 instead of 2068. Uh, yes, it was 2069. Okay, 69, can we take 69 and 70 together? Mm -hmm. um, 69 and 70? Yep. Yes, we can take those together. Okay. I move that the reported committee be accepted and adopted in uh, 2069 and 27. Put upon this passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to uh, accept and adopt uh, 
2069 and 2070. Under discussion? There is no discussion. Roll call, please. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kilson? Aye. Clionis? Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. And Bauk? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 20-71, an RO by the Redevelopment Authority recommending approving the Sheboygan 2010 through 2014 consolidated plan for housing and community development utilizing community development block grant funds through the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Um, so we have a motion on the RO. We need to file. We can. File. We just need to file the resolution because it's already been passed. It's already been passed. We have a motion to file. The res resolution's already been passed. I think that suggestion the redevelopment. They wanted to send it in anyway. Okay. So we have a motion and a second to file. Uh, do we need a? All in favor of filing, say aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion carries. Do we have any other matters authorized by law this evening? Yes, we do. Starting with seventy-two. Okay, other matters authorized by law, Attorney McLean. 2072 is a communication from Lori Kerwin, Executive Assistant of the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce, requesting use of one of the city's free days at Blue Harbor Conference Center for the first Friday forum regarding Sheboygan River dredging project. Uh, that will be referred to finance. 2073 is an ordinance repealing and recreating Article 6, Division 3 of Chapter 50 of the Municipal Code, entitled Smoke Detectors, so as to update the smoke detector ordinance, including definitions, require specific types of smoke alarms, et cetera. Et cetera. That will go to public protection and safety. 2074 is an ordinance repealing and recreating section 50-47 of the municipal code entitled inspections authorized, so as to adopt the local option contained in COM 14.0111B6 of the administrative code to reduce the number of required fire code inspections to one per calendar year, so long as the interval between those inspections does not exceed 15 months. That will be referred to Alderman Hanna and Public Protection and Safety. 2075 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a claim from Gustav Fitzer for alleged damages to the water service curb stop riser for the property at 845 North 6th Street. That will be referred to risk management. 2076 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2010 and June 30, 2011. And that will be referred to Alderman Boren and Law and Licensing. Motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned.